Good evening, everybody. Is everybody awake? I was like, I was thinking back there, this is the quietest room full of people ever. Wake up. I'm Tom. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm also a recovered alcoholic and drug addict and a member of Celebrate Recovery. Hi. And we're going to talk about step three. We talked about it a little bit last week. Um, I noticed some new faces. I want to say welcome to you. So glad you're here. Hope you'll stick around. I was actually talking to one of the leaders of our 101 class. You'll hear a little bit more about that later. If you're new, you'll go to 101. And 101 kind of covers what we're about, kind of how groups work and what we do. Um, and if everybody who was new came back, most of the seats in here would be full. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're new, um, at least come for two, three, four weeks. Get a real feel of what it is to be here, uh, the support that's offered here. Uh, and, and Gary and Kim do a great job of kind of setting you up for success. Um, and yet so many people never come back after that first time. So if you're brand new this evening, um, please come back, give it a real shot. Um, I think once you do that, you won't want to leave. You'll want to come back. You'll want to stay and be a part of this. So um, let me read step three and principle three to you one more time. Principle three says, consciously cho choose to commit all my life and will to Christ's care and control. And step three is like it and says we made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God. So you say, well, I'm new and you're on step three. I'm, I, what happened to step one and two? Well, someone once told me that recovery is like life, which is like a merry-go-round, which is we jump on while it's moving. Um, we cycle through these steps. We'll come right back around to one once we get to 12. And if you didn't hear the talks and things on those before, you'll get those eventually. But recovery really is like that merry-go-round that we jump on while it's spinning. But the good news is there are people there to lend their hand and help us on. And so look around the room if you're new. Anybody here would be glad to support you, help you, encourage you, um, and help you jump on while we're moving. So our acrostic tonight, if you care to take notes, is action. And I'll go through these slower, but I'm going to go through them quickly now. Accept, commit, turn it over. It's only the beginning, one day at a time, and next step. And like I said, I'm going to go through these slowly. But that's action. Um, and we're going to kind of do a two-in-one tonight. So I didn't write this up here for no reason. We will get to that. Um, but acceptance is an action word. Uh, that was a new one for me in recovery to learn that acceptance is action. Another program, uh, another 12-step program likes to say that acceptance is the key to all my problems today. That's true. That's true. But acceptance is an action. It's about what are we doing next? Um, God is so good and shares wisdom with me and I get to share it and I try not to ever take credit for it because it's not mine, it's his but he shared with me a few weeks ago, I was going to counsel this young lady, and as I was walking down the hallway to go to it, he said, we, we spend too much time in the whys and we don't get into the what's. And acceptance is about the what's. And what I mean by that is when we ask why, we sort of circle the drain. We circle the problem. We stay in, um, uh, we, we just kind of focus where we're at. And we have this idea that if I can understand why, then I can somehow control it. And that is such an illusion and a waste of your time and your energy. So I encourage you, get out of the whys and get into the what's. What do I do next? What's my next step? What can I do about this? And that's what step three is about here, and that's what acceptance is about. Acceptance is about, okay, this is the issue, this is the problem, and this is the solution. What do I need to do next? So, so get, into, get into acceptance. Um, I was thinking a lot this week about folks that come in to celebrate recovery that maybe don't know Jesus yet as their Lord and Savior. Maybe you've been around church, you know that this is a Christ-centered program, but you haven't personally taken that step to ask Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior. That's okay. You're welcome here. I want you to know that. I want you to know that no one is, is going to, uh, there's not a quiz, there's not a test. No one's going to ask you about that. But I also want to encourage you that, that that should be one of your goals. That should be one of the places that you want to get to as being a part of Celebrate Recovery. And the good news is the steps themselves are a good pathway to that. So if you're here tonight and you're unsure, you don't know the Lord yet as your Savior, uh, you're in the right place, and this is a path to doing that. So that's acceptance. And I love what Romans 5.8, it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. 
while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, sometimes we try to do in three what the 12 steps are designed to do, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But understand this, step three is a lot about commitment, and it's about our commitment to recovery, our commitment to the program, our commitment to our Lord and Savior, and our commitment to walk this path with our accountability partners and our sponsors. So if you, if you don't remember anything else, remember that commitment. And the reason I looked up that scripture and put it in there, again, that's Romans 5, 8. And all the scriptures, I would really encourage you, write these down, take them home, meditate on them, pray on them, see what the Lord has to say to you about these scriptures. But I wrote this down because I need to be reminded, God didn't say, get cleaned up and then come to me. He said, come to me and I'll clean you up. He died for me while I was still a sinner. He died for me while I was still in my hurt habit and hang up. He died for me while I was still in my addiction. He didn't wait till I said, I'm going to go get in recovery. He didn't wait till I'd worked all 12 steps. He died for me while I was yet a sinner. And sometimes we make it harder for people than Jesus did, right? So everyone's welcome here, no matter where they are in their journey. C stands for commit. Again, I said this, if you don't remember anything else, this is what we're talking about. And yes, I want you to commit to the Lord, but if all you can do today is commit to the program, you've made an excellent start. Make a commitment to the program. And I like what the psalmist says here, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground, and that's Psalm 143.10, Psalm 143.10, teach me to do your will. You want to learn how to do the good and pleasing and right will of God? Stick around. Stick around. T stands for turn it over. Turning it over is a process, right? And someone once said to me, we ought to go one further because I can turn this over all day long, right? I can turn it over, but I'm not letting it go. So what we're really saying is we're giving it to the Lord. When we say turn it over, what we really mean is we're letting it go. We're giving control over to Jesus. So when we say turn it over, turn it over, let it go, relinquish control. Whether you realize this or not, I think the 12 steps are one of the best processes we have in spiritual transformation. One of the best things that's ever come out of the modern age for spiritual transformation is the 12 steps in all of its forms. What is spiritual transformation? That means becoming something and someone new from the inside out, right? You can think of the 12 steps as a rotor rooter for your soul, all right? We make room and the Holy Spirit moves in. And when the Holy Spirit moves in, look out, because things are gonna change, things are gonna get good. And that's really what we're talking about, making that, making that place. Um, I was thinking about turning over our will, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. That's not automatic even for me most of the time now, and I can guarantee you that when I was new in the program, it wasn't automatic for me. And people used to talk about it all the time, and I didn't understand how you could do that. Well, let me tell you that today what I know is that the spiritual transformation that takes place through the working of the 12 steps will allow you to get to a place where your will is God's will, Right? And his will is your will, and then turning it over becomes automatic, and you don't have to think about it. I talked about it last week a little bit that we don't want to be someone who doesn't steal because we have to remind our ourselves all the time don't steal. Right? A thief is not somebody who steals, a thief is somebody who will steal if the occasion is right. So if we don't want to steal, we want to become the kind of people who don't steal. Not the kind of person that has to fight themselves all the time. Think about it in terms of you're here for drinking or drugs. You don't want to white knuckle it the rest of your life. So what needs to happen is you need to be transformed from the inside out into the kind of person who doesn't desire to drink or drug. Then there's no battle anymore. Then there's no white knuckling it. And that's when we learn to turn it over automatically. And again, that's a commitment to working the steps. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship, Romans 12.1. Right? 
it's not that God doesn't want our praise and it's not that he's not worth our praise, but it says you really want to worship, then turn your whole life, this is what we're talking about, turn your whole life over to God. That's the right form of worship. That's the right understanding of who God is and who we are, right? You never did belong to yourself. You're really just returning to God what belongs to him anyway. But he wants you to do it willingly. He wants you to sacrifice your will and your desires and what you want to what he wants. And he wants you to do that willingly because you do that out of love. Think about somebody you've loved, whether it's your spouse, your children, a friend. When you love someone, you do that, right? You sacrifice what you want and your desires and your will because that's how you feel about them. And in some sense, that sense of sacrifice melts away, doesn't it? Because if it's really love, it doesn't feel like a sacrifice. You're just glad to be with that person. You just feel fortunate to be around them. Well, that's what the relationship God wants with you, for you to love him that way. But we have all these selfish desires and selfish and self-centered thoughts and things that we're recovering from, because if you didn't know it, that's really at the root of your troubles. And again, and you're going to hear me say it several more times tonight, the steps will allow you to begin to relinquish that, to empty out, to make that hollow place where the Holy Spirit moves in. I stands for it's only the beginning. Last week, we talked a little bit about step three being a turning point, a pivotal step in our progress and in our recovery, because in one, we came to grips with what it really means to be powerless, but all that did was really show the problem to us. In two, we realized that a big part of the problem was our own thinking and our inability to think reasonably and soundly and to react soundly to life, and yet we still hadn't gotten there yet. Three is that point where we go, something's got to change, and I'm committing to do what will bring about that change. So that is the turning point. It's only a beginning. Remember what I said last week? You'll know in 11 if three worked. And a better way to say it might be you'll know in 11 if you mint your, mint your commitment in three. The O stands for one day at a time. Well, let me, let me back up. I missed my scripture here, Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Right? So there, it's contingent. We don't, we don't like to think about scripture that way sometimes, but a lot of scripture is only if this happens will this happen. And here's one. The steps of man are established by the Lord if, when, he delights in his way. If you want your steps to be established by the Lord, learn to love him, learn to turn your will over to him, right? Learn to hollow out. One day at a time, we live in the moment. Tomorrow and yesterday are fantasies. They're fantasies. You may not wake up tomorrow. It's not real yet. Yesterday's gone. The only thing that's real is today. God's real. Where is he? Well, in your life, he's today. Now, he's yesterday, today, and tomorrow, but you're not. <laughs> so if you want to be with God, you stay in the day. We don't mean we don't make plans. Of course we make plans. I've got a retirement plan, right? We make plans, but we don't live in them. We live in today. What can you do today towards your recovery? What can you do today towards your relationship with God? What can you do today to help another person? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. One day at a time. This is how we live. Someone asked me once, "How do you have so many years sobriety? One day at a time. Literally one day at a time. And all of a sudden you wake up and you have time, right? N is the next step. And you know what the next step is? The next step is four. <laughs> What's the next step? Four. Get into action. Acceptance is action. Get into action. And four is really, now you, don't, you may not feel this way, but four is really the first action step. One, two, and three are intellectual consent. Four, you put pen to paper, you do the tough stuff that there is to do, 
and it's the first place you really start to feel the change happening in your life. And the cool thing about doing four, and we'll talk about this more when we get there, is that you start to really feel a part of. You understand at a deep level, I'm doing the do of the program. I'm, I'm, I'm actually taking action and partnering with the Lord on the change that he is trying to do in me from the inside out. So, that was that part. I promised it was a two-parter. I think I'm going to have to move this if everybody's going to see this board. So I will move it. And I've never done this with a mic in one hand. and a, So I'm... <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Who cannot see it all? Anybody? If you want to move around to be able to see. And... I used to do this for each of the step lectures, and I did it so many times in a row that I took a break, but I have to be honest, I really love the whiteboard, and I'm glad, I'm glad to be back to the whiteboard, and we're going to break down the step and really allow the step to explain itself to us. So made, this is, this is like a pivot, like this is, you did something here, right? It's past tense, and what did you, what did you do? You made a decision. What's a decision? It's a choice. And we're going to say it's a conscious choice. You make choices all day long, whether you realize it or not. Drive fast, drive slow, turn, don't turn, walk, don't walk. We make decisions all day long. But what we're really talking about here is that this is an informed, conscious choice. That you, that, that you have spent time praying, thinking, you've talked with your sponsor and accountability partner, you've talked about it in your groups, you have every, I, you know what you're doing, you're making a conscious choice. To turn, and we talked about this, that we're really talking about letting go, and we could even say this is another surrender for us. In fact, I would argue this might be a bigger surrender, believe it or not. I know it was hard for a lot of you to get in here and to take the first step, but I would be willing to say that to really take step three, to really mean step three, to really let three have an impact in, on your life might be a bigger surrender. Remember, we've talked about that selfishness, and this is probably too light a color for anybody to see, and self-centeredness is the root of our issues. Original sin. Right? Original sin. That's, we call it original sin and we get really mad at Adam and Eve. If you guys were the first two people, you'd have done it too. That's what you need to know. Don't be so mad at Adam and Eve. It would have, you would have done it too. Okay, that's what, that's what we need to take away from that, that their sin is our sin and our sin is their sin, that that idea of wanting to be in control and it, having it all about us. I think I've shared this in here before. I've got to share this again. Every time this comes up, I have to share this. So in the creation story, it says that they were not to eat of the tree, right, of the knowledge of good and evil, because surely on that day they would die. And Satan says, you won't die. You'll be like God. Right? Well, reread the creation story. It says that God made man and woman in his image. Wait for it. In his likeness. Satan took their car and sold it back to them. And they bought it. Right? They were already like God. That's how he made man and woman. It says it right in the creation story. And then Satan says, it'll make you like God. Okay. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> so we're, we're surrendering, and we're surrendering all of this. Now think about how hard that is. Think about that. Think about we're, we're born like this. Just watch a kid. It doesn't take them long to figure out me, 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 and we spend the rest of our life backing away from that. And in three, we're asking you to make a conscious choice to surrender that. So maybe you'll understand why I say I think this is actually harder than step one. And what is that? It's our will. Now, how in the world did you define what your will is? Right? 
Well, where does your will start? It starts in your thoughts. Every, everything you do starts with a thought. Now, again, things like I just started walking across the stage. I didn't have to stop and make myself conscious of walking, but that was an act of my will. It was an act of my will to walk across the stage. Everything we do starts with a thought, starts with our will. We will it to be. We will it to happen. So the easiest way to remember this is your thoughts. And our lives, what are our lives? And somebody is inevitably going to say it's plural. Okay, it's plural. Just say that's all the hats that you wear in your life, whatever it is. Or you can say we're talking to the collective group in the, in the room, whatever. The point is our lives are made up of the individual actions we take. So the easy way to remember this is you're making a conscious choice to turn your thoughts and your actions over. And remember, we said this is a letting go. To the care of God. Now, this is really important. Don't miss the word care. Because a lot of people read this. We're turning our thoughts and our actions over to God. If God wanted robots, he would have given us bolts. Okay? He didn't make us that way. He gave us free will. He doesn't want robots. He doesn't want marionettes. And he doesn't want puppets. If we just turned our lives over to God, that's what it would be. But that's not what we're asked to do. We're asked to turn it over to the care of God. And there's all kinds of synonyms for care. Love, affection, discipline, right? There's all kinds of words that we can fit in here. And that's what we're doing. We're turning our will and our lives, we're turning our thoughts and our actions over to the love, the nurturing, the discipline, the he'll give us boundaries, right? That's what we're doing, God. Now, that seems straightforward in a Christian environment, but let's think about what that means, too. Our God is a triune God. What does that mean? That means he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That means... We're making a conscious choice to turn our thoughts and our actions over to the nurturing care and love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I hear a lot of talk about the Father and a lot of talk about the Son and not a whole lot of talk about the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said, I am going to be with my Father in heaven at the right hand. He ascended into heaven and he left. And the good news is, he said, but I will send you another. That Another should be your best friend and partner in your recovery. Not a, there's not a better, he's on the inside of you. There's not a better, you couldn't have a better leader, comforter, friend, right? And yet we often don't nurture that relationship with the Holy Spirit. So I'm encouraging you tonight as part of your recovery program to nurture your relationship with the Holy Spirit. You can, you can get online, look up scriptures with the Holy Spirit, Start studying that, getting to know the person of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is a person with a personality, right? There's all kinds of cool things. He comes in power. He gives us the ability to do things we couldn't do. He prays for us when we don't have the words. He helps illuminate God's word to us and helps us understand things we couldn't possibly understand without him. He's indispensable, and yet we never talk about the Holy Spirit. So I want you to remember that you're turning your thoughts and your actions over to the care of the Trinity. Okay? Now, all that's well and good. If the only thing you remember tonight is you're making a commitment to work the rest of the steps, you got something out of this evening. All right? That's really what step three is about. It's about your commitment, your willingness. And something I don't hear enough here is don't quit until the miracle happens. Now, don't, don't, don't minimize those words. We hear miracles so often that we become sort of deaf to it. Listen to what I'm saying. Every single one of you came here with a hurt habit or hang-up you're powerless over. Your lack, your dilemma was lack of power. God will do for you what you can't do for yourself. And when he does, you are a miracle. You are a miracle. It is a miracle. When an alcoholic doesn't drink, it's a miracle. When a codependent sets up boundaries, it's a miracle. When 
the grief that was overcoming you turns to joy, that's a miracle. Don't minimize the miracle. Don't minimize what God wants to do in your life. But you have to make a commitment and follow the path he's put in front of you. Are there other ways to get there? Yeah, but he didn't send you to those other places. He sent you here. There are many paths to the top of the mountain, but he sent you on this one. So why don't you do this one to the best of your ability and see what happens? Thank you so much for letting me yell and rant and do all these kinds of things. Let me, <laughs> I better pray to bring myself down a little bit. Heavenly Father, just so grateful for your love, um, for the fact that you, you sent us here, that you, um, that you put this path in front of us, that you put these steps, these, uh, as people say, this is a simple program for complicated people. And I own that, Lord. And uh, Lord, I just uh, want to pray for this room, the, the, the people represented here, the families represented here, uh, the hurts and the habits and the hangups. Um, and, and Lord, I realize that we use words so often that sometimes they lose their meaning. But there's real hurt here in this room tonight. There's, there's, there are people that don't believe there's a way out. And Lord, you're our way out. You are the the way, the truth, and the life. And so, Lord, I just pray that there would be a real commitment tonight to work these steps, to work this program, to do it to the best of their ability, that, Lord, that they would become that shining light on the hill, uh, the candle that we don't put under the bushel, Lord, that the people in this room would become the salt that make others thirsty for the living water. God, thank you for this evening and for the conversations that are going to happen. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.